Hey everyone, welcome to Open Press uh, 2016. Thanks everyone for coming out. I'm very excited uh, to have a great um, evening of uh, you know uh, translation, performance, uh, some archival type of work, some music, uh, vocalizations, all kinds of performances, um, and we're, it'll be kind of in little sets. So the first set is going to be more translation focused. And uh, I always forget to do this, but hi, I'm Matthew Timmons, and I run Insert Blanc Press. Hi. And uh, so we're hosting this evening, and um, and uh, yeah, I'm very, really looking forward to it. We have, uh, first up, we'll have David Book from Twip, Tripwire. Twip, Twipwire? Tripwire. Um, he's got a new issue out there that you should pick up. And obviously, all of the book you all know that all of the books here, you should buy them and take them home and read them and whatnot. I don't have to tell you that, but I did anyway. First, though, we, are, we will have the inimitable David Book. Uh, thank you. That's it's, um, anxiety, anxiety producing to be first. Uh, thanks everybody for coming out. Thanks for, uh, to Matt for inviting me and all the other people who helped organize this and all the unpaid labor. I guess you all are always already interns from top to bottom. Um, I'm just going to talk uh, a little bit um, on the my magazine Tripwire. I'm just trying to set my timer. I can't even see it. Okay, uh, um, with this focus uh, specifically around questions of translation. So Tripwire is a magazine of poetics that uh, uh, Yetta Morrison and I uh, started in 1997. We did it for about five years, and then I started it up again about two years ago. Um, it's just been very interesting thinking about um, publishing uh, international writers in an era of snail mail and the era of the internet has really changed the ability to find a different kind of global scale and scope for thinking about um, a certain kind of poetics. And I've, I've always been, in, we were always interested in not just publishing um, poetry itself, but interviews and uh, sort of non-academic poet critical essays and reviews and um, some visual art. But I, I want to talk a, a little bit about the focus on uh, translation and not just translation per se, but kind of a, what I aim to be uh, to think of as a kind of vigorous internationalism. Since, of course, it's you know, U.S. The U.S. is not the only place that publishes in in English, but not only is uh, the U.S. And excuse the gross generalization. The U.S. poetry scene seems largely monolingual in its focus, but um, quite parochial vis-a-vis -vis radical um, poetries coming out of places like uh, and. You know, in English and and breaking English and in patois, in uh, the Pacific Islands, the Caribbean, the Antipodes, Antipodes. Um, where else do they speak English? Africa, Canada, etc. Uh, and to think in the age of Trump and the internet that uh, you know it's easy to laugh at Trump, and yet how many Mexican poets are we are we capable? And I say this as a gringo who doesn't speak or read Spanish, so I don't, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but it's a question that, that really paws at me a lot, as a, especially as a, someone who lives in California, uh, and the responsibility to move beyond sort of a, 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 a tokenistic kind of gesture towards some sort of global diversity, but towards a kind of rigorous interrogation of um, multi-local sort of sites of, of, of issues, or, or of contestation, at least around issues that I'm, I'm interested in. Um, and I always say it's sort of like, imagine trying to, like, taking yourself seriously as a filmmaker and then saying, yeah, but I'm just, I feel no reason to pay any attention to cinema from Iran or Turkey or South Korea. I have nothing to learn. Or I'm a musician, but eh, West African or Brazilian or Russian music, I have nothing to learn. And yet, as poets, it seems increasingly like it's, I mean, it's difficult to get contemporary, to get the news in contemporary uh, translation, but increasingly important. So the flip side of that for me as an editor, and this is kind of the other 
point I want to make is the risks of falling into a kind of mere connoisseurship of the exotic. If you think about the the uh, bourgeois art collector with the, you know, you walk in their well-appointed living room with these sort of touristic art trinkets from, you know, all the different places I've I've visited and vacationed around the world, and I have, you've, you know, you've seen them. I try to hide them at my house. But the kind of difference between uh, an investment in a kind of global diversity where everyone's equally great and it's sort of like where translation is a, is presumed to be a social good regardless of content or context. And I'm always asking myself how to find, break beyond that when I don't have access except through the translators to the various contexts in which work is coming from, right? So for instance, I've, I've been publishing uh, work from this uh, very young Iranian-American translator of contemporary tra uh, Iranian poets who are all under the age of 30. And so I'm fascinated. Well, what do you guys argue about over there? What's you know what's the interest? What are the influences? You know, and as far as I know, the other older poets in Tehran might be like, oh, you published those idiots? Like, you're such a typical American. Of course you like them. So it, it constantly I'm questioning my own taste, and I learn a lot. My own poetry, I hope, gets tested constantly through this kind of translation work. So that's kind of the um, the tension that I'm trying to work through. Let me see. Look at the God Almighty. Just can translate this directly into my brain. Yeah, I can't even, I don't even know how to push the right button. Okay. Um, let me just look at my notes here. And um, for those of you who have worked with, tra who do translation, have worked from, work with translators, of course, it's really something that in this country, as I think you all know, especially those doing experimental work, poetry work, it's so undervalued. It, um, I mean, you're, it's uh, it's unbelievable to me how little valued, uh, both economically and even in the realm of cultural capital, to the extent that there is any for poetry, that translators receive. And uh, I try to do my tiniest little part by having, uh, I've started these things called the tripwire micro grants in translation where you can donate money and once it gets to $100, that $100 goes to a translator for uh, to publish new work because otherwise I don't pay writers, you get your two copies. Um, and so I'm just trying to find different ways to sort of honor the, the work of translators. In fact, now that I say this out loud, I'm realizing I still fall in the habit of, of you know, in the table of contents, it'll say the author translated by. And I think maybe I'll try to have translator translated of, even just those sort of things, if we're thinking really radically about what translators do as artists and not just as service workers, I think there's a way we can try to honor that. Uh, and I'm just going to, because Matt uh, invited me to um, share some of the work in Tripwire, I, I brought, I have some of these issues back here. I have a Issue number nine, which is, tra these are all theme-based, so this one is on um, transnational translational and has uh, work both contemporary and archival uh, in translation and about translation in some, uh, some interviews. Uh, number 10 has a about 120-page focus on the work of C.A. Conrad in English, uh, along with other work and reviews. Number 12, which is back from the printer but is not out, is a uh, issue devoted to uh, the Vancouver, uh, Vancouver Poetics and Politics with a um, feature on uh, the recently deceased Peter Cully. And I'll read a couple pieces from the uh, pop issue. And this is an example of um, the, the, the sort of question I ask myself is how to, th how to think about questions of pop, populism, avant pop, pop cult. Um, outside of the American nexus, or they're sort of to problematize the way in which, uh, and decenter the way in which pop or po pop poetics or selfie poetics might think of itself outside. And so, how, what, what might that look like coming from other areas what, when those questions are asked beyond sort of references to popular culture or just the presumption that something that's current is therefore a commentary on the contemporary. So I'm not saying I'm successful at this. This is just sort of the, the problematic I was attempting to get at. So I'll read one or two pieces. Oh, do I have some of this Polish vodka? Mm. Uh, the first is from this... Um, well, the translator is Paul Merchant, who is a uh, UK-based translator uh, from the Spanish, and the poet is uh, the Argentinian poet Mar Mariano Blot. Uh, if I can find it. 
uh, I'm not sure if he's, I don't, I don't think he's been published in the States before. Uh, and this, this poem is named after a 15 year old who was shot by the police in uh, Buenos Aires in 2010. Diego Bonifoy. They killed a kid through the back in Bariloche. They killed a kid through the back in Bariloche. They killed a kid through the back in Bariloche. Who was called Diego Bonifoy? Who was called Diego Bonifoy? Who was called Diego Bonifoy? But life goes on the same. But life goes on the same. But life goes on the same. You bought yourself new trainers. You bought yourself new trainers. You bought yourself new trainers. That's a fact of reality. That's a fact of reality. That's a fact of reality. Perhaps one day, perhaps one day, perhaps one day, Diego Bonifoy will come back in electronic music format. Diego Bonifoy will come back in electronic music format. Diego Bonifoy will come back in electronic music format. And on the dance floors and basements across the world. And on the dance floors and basements across the world. And on the dance floors and basements across the world. The kids will put our hands up. The kids will put our hands up. The kids will put our hands up. Those who've taken ecstasy, those who've taken ecstasy, those who've taken ecstasy, put your hands up, put your hands up, put your hands up. For Diego Bonifoy, for Diego Bonifoy, for Diego Bonifoy, as a tribute to his back, as a tribute to his back, as a tribute to his back, we dance for that as well. We dance for that as well. We dance for that as well. And across the world, there's a load of kids. And across the world, there's a load of kids, and across the world, there's a load of kids who don't dance to come out in the photo, who don't dance to come out in the photo, who don't dance to come out in the photo. They dance so that tomorrow, they dance so that tomorrow, they dance so that tomorrow in the morning, the sun comes out shining. In the morning, the sun comes out shining. In the morning, the sun comes out shining, if possible, and if that's not possible, if possible, and if that's not possible, if possible, and if that's not possible, so that in this so in that so that in this world, so that in this world, so that in this world, and so that in that world, and so that in that world, and so that in that world, there is never again a mountain range. There is never again a mountain range. There is never again a mountain range of the end. Andes so that there are only, of the Andes so that there are only, of the Andes so that there are only facts of reality, facts of reality, facts of reality, happening one after the other, happening one after the other, happening one after the other, and so that Diego Bonifoy is back, and so that Diego Bonifoy is back, and so that Diego, Diego Bonifoy is back may now also, may now also, may now also run in the open air, run in the open air, run in the open air, under this shining sun, under this shining sun, under this shining sun, to this shining dance floor, to this shining dance floor, to this shining dance floor, flowers on the slope of spring, flowers on the slope of spring, flowers on the slope of spring. And I guess I'll stop there. That's Mariano Blatt, translated by Paul Merchant, Tripwire 11. Thank you for your time. My power to the translator.